In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful God, the one true and living God who came to us in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, to whom holy praise is due forever. I am forever thankful to Allah for his intervention in our affairs by raising from among us a divine messenger in the person of the most honorable and honored Elijah Muhammad, the eternal leader of the nation of Islam. I thank him, them both for giving us an extension of themselves and our divine reminder, divine warner, divine comforter in our midst, a little Messiah among us, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I want to greet you all with the greeting words of peace of Assalamu alaikum. I am your brother, Henry Muhammad. I am a student minister in the Nation of Islam of Muhammad Ma 7C and Brooklyn representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And I'm coming before you as a brother, as a member of the nation, as a black man, as a father, just to talk for a moment about a man that has been in the midst of us whom I consider to be the biggest and best and baddest, boldest black leader in America, and that is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I don't say this to take away from any other black leaders or any leadership that's up and coming, but of knowing the track record of a man like Farrakhan who has been following the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad since 1955, and even after the government destroyed the nation of Islam and in its fall and rise again, in 1975 and then rising again in 1977 by the love of a man's faith in God, a love of a man's faith in a man of God, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Minister Louis Farrakhan stood up and strived hard in the name of Allah to bring back the teachings and remembrance of what that man, Elijah Muhammad, had said and done among us for the past 40 years prior to that time. Me as a black man growing up in Brooklyn, New York over the past 40 years knew nothing about this until the late 1980s. But now as we look around, you constantly hear, you know, talks in the news, talks on the radio, people coming against entertainers that may have stood with Minister Farrakhan, such as our brother Nick Cannon, our brother Deshaun Jackson, our brother Ice Cube you know, Stephen Jackson and others, anybody that seems to have something to say positive or even show a picture standing with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan or make a positive statement after having a beautiful meeting with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we find that there are attacks coming, labeling him as anti-Semitic, labeling him as uh, homophobic, labeling him as uh, racist, labeling him as uh, a hater of Jews. And Minister Farrakhan is really none of that. The sad thing about it is you cannot find one thing in the past 43 years since 1977 of the minister's stance in his representation of God, his representation of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, his love and protection on behalf of black people that states and on behalf of the righteous, whether they be black, whether they be brown, whether they be poor, white, his stance for freedom, justice and equality, nothing in any of the words and things that have been said. You have not have no record of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan or those of us who follow him in the nation of Islam as being anyone that has done any physical harm to anyone white, to anyone Jewish, to any of our people that are black, to anyone that is living a lifestyle of uh, homosexual or anything like that. All we have done is pointed out the truth according to the teachings of Allah in the Holy Quran, the Bible as given to us from the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It seems to me that our open enemy is constantly looking at what we stand for, meaning Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, as a threat to what they have been doing to us as a people for over 400 years. We have been the victims. Black people have been the victims in North America for the past 465 years now to the success of white people here in North America. And they have stood on our backs for all this time. And it is written in the scriptures that God says to Abraham, know of a surety that thy seed will be a stranger in a strange land among a strange people. 
despised and rejected for 400 years. And after that time, God says he's coming and he's going to judge those people. And he's going to raise Abraham's people up out of from among them and take them into the promised land with great substance. And they will go to their fathers in a good old age. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us that that is us, that we are the true children of Israel, not the Jews that are before us today. And so it seems that as soon as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan stood up and made those statements, the attack got heavier. Now, all we're saying is that if it's not true, prove it not to be true. But if it is the truth, then we have to deal with that kind of truth, because that means black people that you and I have been victims for a long time. And in the midst of this victimization, God has been after us. So there's a war going on. And in the midst of war, we find ourselves that we can be casualties of war or we can be on the part of the problem or part of the solution. In the nation of Islam, we stand in the vanguard position on behalf of our people and all of the oppressed to be part of the solution, following God and God's messenger. So my as as I said before you as Brother Henry Muhammad, not as brother student minister, but as brother Henry Muhammad, Muslim follower, the teachings of Honorable Elijah Muhammad, member of the Nation of Islam, I have to testify that this man, Farrakhan, you got to keep your hands off of him. This man, Farrakhan, is a man that has been known to me and thousands, hundreds of thousands of us as a true man of God that loves his people, loves God, loves righteousness and righteousness and only wants to see right for all of us. For as long as I have been in the nation of Islam and the few times that I have been blessed to have dinner with the minister, the few times I've been blessed to have private dialogue with the minister, he's the same way in private as he is in public. He doesn't say nothing in public that he will not say in private and he doesn't say nothing in private that he will not say in public. This man of God loves us as a people. And just as you would look at our heroes and sheroes of the past 400 years, whose shoulders we all stand on, that were bridges for us to come to this point. When you think about our brother Frederick Douglass, when you think about our sister uh, Sojourner Truth, when you think about all those who stood, but when you think of the prophets that we've never met that stood for God, you have to think about a man like Farrakhan. You have to think about the people of the nation of Islam. There is nothing that the enemy puts out against the minister that is true. They take his words and they lie to, about him to make black people look at him as someone that they need to stay away from. Why? What is it about Minister Farrakhan that has white people so upset? Even when he's not saying anything, they feel that he's saying something. Throughout this time of the past four or five months under the shelter in place from the coronavirus, the minister hasn't been saying anything up until July 4th when he gave a message on the criterion. However, prior to that, you would read in the newspapers where there have been those of the ADL, those of the Southern Poverty Law Center that have been making statements against the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So all this time we realize just as it was in the stories as pictured and painted to us from the scriptures of the Bible of Jesus being on the cross, we know from our teachings and from what Minister Farrakhan has taught us that they always try to put black men and women who do not go along to get along, who are willing to be a forces of resistance against oppression and stand up for freedom, justice and equality, regardless to whom or what they always want to put them on the cross. And as some of our people start waking up to the realization of our condition here in America and seeing who our real enemies are, as soon as they start seeing you come awake, brothers and sisters, they look to put you on the cross. That's why they attack Ice Cube. That's why they'll attack our brother Dejon Jackson, Deshaun Jackson. That's why they'll attack Nick Cannon. But these are brothers who are coming up into knowledge. And just getting a little bit of an awakening and maybe have more. But because they have influence of followers of black people and white people around them, then they're worried about that influence because then that means the ones people that have been lying to us and have been really our enemies will start to get exposed. 
The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan right now, the enemy has him on a cross. Not a physical cross, but the kind of cross to whereas you have him up and his hands are bound and his feet are bound, you know, and you are throwing uh, things at him in word. But it's not his trial. The enemy knows he can't do nothing with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan unless it pleases Allah God. And the minister has said it time and time again. If it pleases Allah God, it pleases me. But it's a trial for us in the nation of Islam who love that man that has stood for us when we couldn't stand for ourselves. So I, as his student representative here in Brooklyn, New York, want to testify and just say, hands off Farrakhan. You are really barking up the wrong tree when you try to come against this man. To come against Minister Farrakhan is to come against the nation of Islam. But more importantly, brothers and sisters, those of you who know me and those of you who are friends of mine on Facebook and those of you who have heard me in private and in public and those of you that's hearing me for the first time, you can take it or let it alone. But I know for a fact that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is a man of God. And I know for a fact that God is backing him and God's Christ is backing him. And we would be better off showing love to that man than trying to come against him. In understanding what we're looking at in the minister, in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you see a product of it right in front of you. For I was one of those who was lost out there, as many of our brothers and sisters. You know, growing up in a household with a mother and a father, having the standards of morality, but being challenged by the ways of this world in these streets and the enticing things of this world in these streets. And before you know it, vendoring off into doing things that was against my own self, against my people and against the morality of society. And then finding myself to be more of a part of the problem than the solution. Living out the stereotypes of young black people that are portrayed by white media and authors throughout the society. And then I heard the voice of God coming through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan under the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad which straightened me up and made me start looking at myself more self-consciously and woke awakened in me that self-accusing spirit of my own subconscious, that little part of God that's within myself. And by following him and following this teaching, I was able to come out of the bad habits that I've had and turn them into good habits, into new ones, be more of a principled mind individual and raise children up to be men and women of principle and move on successfully in life, not according to this world, but according to God. And that's what the enemy is afraid of. See, we talk Jesus, we talk Muhammad, we talk Moses, but who's willing to live Jesus, live Muhammad and live Moses in the midst of those who are enemies of Jesus, Moses and Muhammad. That's what you have from God in the nation of Islam and throughout the communities of those who are striving to be righteous. But the boldest one that we see hands down is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I will keep saying that because if you notice, brothers and sisters, the nation of Islam has been sanctioned by white America. We don't get contracts. We don't get support from the outside community of white America. We get sanctioned by them. Our support comes from God and our people. And because of what God has blessed us with through our people, we have been able to do a lot with a little. And this upsets the enemy. This upsets the oppressor. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the Nation of Islam, as I would say from my own personal testimony, has helped me to clean my life up over the past 35 years. No smoking, no drinking, no chasing women, no chasing men, getting away from the ill repute ways of life, still respecting all the laws of the land as I respect the laws of God, respecting those in authority from among me and those in authority over me as long as it does not conflict with my religion. However, the fire and turmoil of this wicked way of life in American society as an oppressed black man that helped to build me up into the man I am today, I've been able to simmer that fire based off of my love of God and following the example of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the teachings that he has given us. But don't believe for one moment that that fire is not still there. Remember Moses, when he got to the top of the mountain, 
God's anger was shown in the fire. The bush was burning, but it wasn't, the bush wasn't consumed with the fire. There's fire in all of us that have been raised by God through the teachings of Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the example and preaching of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And that fire can become very illuminating at a moment's notice. As a matter of fact, the time we're in right now is a time when the stars of God are about to come out. You're looking at Minister Farrakhan when you look at a brother Henry Muhammad or any member of the nation of Islam because the spirit of God in him is now infused in all of us and infused in our children. So I'm saying we're not going to stop. But we want to make sure time and time again that we start coming before you family to uncover the plot and plan of the enemy so that you can see clearly with 2020 vision in 2020. Thank you for giving me your time as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum.